All right, and good morning, everyone, from our Boston Regional Training Center here in Nashua, New Hampshire. I'm Matt Schwegler with ITC. Joining me is Jason Gagnon and Alex Crucial for today's special live preview of the Information 2018 Conference, which will be held in Austin, Texas, coming up this September, the 11th through the 14th. We thought we'd start off by sharing with you a little bit of what information is all about. I've got a video that I'd like to play, and from there, we'll get into the main presentation. Get InfraReady for the world's largest thermal imaging training experience, coming to the world's friendliest and most exciting city, Austin, Texas. Join us September 2018 for another outstanding information conference, this time at the fabulous Hilton Austin, right in the heart of town. Featuring three and a half packed days of high value presentations, plus clinics to keep your expertise sharp and certification up to date. This is one conference professional thermographers cannot afford to miss. Spend your evenings or maybe an extra day surrounded by all the excitement of downtown Austin's incredible entertainment district. This is the legendary live music capital of the world after all, with everything from blues and country to rock, jazz, folk, you name it. There's so much to see and do. Dine on a celebrity chef's outstanding cuisine, savor the best barbecue, or grab a bite from one of Austin's hundreds of amazing food trucks. Take in the natural beauty of Austin, tour a fascinating museum, or head out on the hike and bike trail. It's Southern hospitality at its very best. The perfect place to get an extra leg up on the latest insights, techniques, and benefits of thermal imaging. Learn a lot and enjoy your time during Information 2018, coming to the Hilton Austin this September. Don't miss this great opportunity to keep your career fresh. Register now. Hear what so many thermal imaging experts get out of information. You're working as a one-man band in Ottawa. Come down here, you can meet a lot of people really quickly. Every time I come here, it's been new. I like it. It's fresh. It keeps you interested, you know, keeps my enthusiasm up and to keep pushing. This is my very first conference. You get a better understanding of, of uh, all the stuff that I have to cover. It's not very many chances you get to have all the industry leaders come together with experts in thermography. With a wide diversity of people, you, there's many, many lessons you can learn about thermography and the applications to use it in your situation. So I wanted to rub some shoulders with some of the best in the world. I picked their brains. How are they doing things? How they got their business plan set up? Good cross-section of people, a lot of good conversation. Everybody knows that the best information comes in the meeting after the meeting. It's all been very good. You know, it's very well organized. I think the venue, the different presenters have been fabulous. Now, I've really been going to different courses that don't even apply to home inspection so I can see what infrared thermography really is about across all different lines. You can learn about medical, you can learn about mechanical, all these other aspects that you don't know about until you hear it here. Very diversified. It's for people that are new and old to the trade, uh, whether it be a refresher or to bring new insight to, to uh, people in the thermography trade. It's been a great conference. I'm very satisfied. If you want to know about a new technology, you go meet people who use it. So much to do, so many people to meet, a lot of things to learn. Enjoy it very much. So an overview of today, uh, today's webinar. We're going to talk, first off, I've got some free papers for everybody to uh, grab. If you look at the right-hand side of your control panel, you should see an area where there are handouts available uh, for today's presentation. Included within those handouts, I actually have three white papers from Information 2016 that you're welcome to take with you today. One on identifying issues on installed photovoltaic systems using thermal imagery from Frederick Brooks. Another paper on moisture and roofs due to air leakage from Randy Keyes. And the effect of optical obstructions on temperature measurement with Maude Hovens and Andy Wichter. Uh, those three papers, those three PDFs that you'll see there on the right-hand side are yours to take. They're absolutely free. Uh, it's sort of a thank you for joining us for today's presentation here on information. You'll also see the brochure that's available there for the 2018 conference uh, with more information there as well. So go ahead and grab that. And uh, again, thanks for joining us. In a moment, Alex will talk about the information experience. We'll talk about some of the conference pricing. And then I've got an overview of some of the clinics and presentations that will be held during uh, this year's event. Give you a taste of some of those papers that are going to be out there. And we'll kind of weave in some case studies, some educational content as well. I wanted to give everybody a little bit of something of value today, not just the promo for the conference, but a little bit more 
and I'm going to expand upon a few of the points that some of these clinics will be addressing uh, during the conference. And then we've got Jason here, who's going to be talking about uh, FLIR tools, right? Yep. Yep. We'll be doing uh, two clinics. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that um, a little bit later. Great, and we'll meet some of the exhibitors. Alex has some information on them. We'll wrap that up there at the end, and then we also have a special registration offer as well, don't we? We do, yes, that we're excited to uh, talk a little bit more about later. We'll debut that here at the end, but before we go any further, let's you know, let's talk about what is the, uh, the pricing. Yeah, so we're offering a couple of different packages this year, the first being our basic package. So for those who are just looking to attend the conference, they wanna get all four days, they want to renew their certification. We have our basic package, which is $16.95. That's going to get you access to all four days of the conference. Um, and then we're, you'll also get a guest pass to our evening dinner reception, which we do for all our attendees on the first night of the conference. It's a great way to kind of meet everybody, see you know who you're going to be attending seminars with during the week. Um, and then we also have our premium registration, which is going to be $19.95 which includes all the same things as the basic package, but you'll also get a FLIR C3 imager with your registration. And we also include some online courses, which is great. And those will be available to you before the conference. So you'll have a time to kind of freshen up on a lot of the concepts and have questions ready for when you're attending the conference. Great, well, uh, the, the event itself is not just about the content, it's also about, like you said, the networking uh, opportunities that are available there. There's the opening evening reception. Uh, what about the hotel? What about the location? Austin, Texas. This is yeah. uh, reminiscent of uh, Nashville. A lot of live music, a lot of great food, and a great location, I think, we've got also, right? Really, really awesome venue. Super excited to go there this year. Um, as we saw in the video, we're going to be at the Hilton Austin, and this is really the heart of the city here. It's only two blocks away from 6th Street, which is the historic entertainment district in Austin. And in just this one stretch of road, you have access to over 100 bars, restaurants, shopping, cafes. And, you know, you would think for something that's, that's so prime location that it would be so, so expensive to stay there. But we've, we've actually been able to get a premium rate for anybody who's attending the information conference for only $199 a night. And I actually did some, some research on this. And the standard rate for the hotel for the September 11th to the 14th is $349 right now. So this is almost a 50% discount on your room, which, which is really tremendous. And especially with proximity to so many entertainment options, you know, your, your ability to do things after the conference are significant. So we got the information. If you want to get the hotel booked, I would book soon. Uh, the room block is filling up. You can go to the website at information.org or call the 800 number there and uh, get a room and uh, get registered and all that stuff. So Absolutely. I would definitely recommend if you're going to be attending information, make your room reservation as soon as possible. The rooms are limited. I know we still have plenty of plenty available at the moment, but I would definitely not wait. All right. See a couple of people joining us on Facebook. We are on Facebook Live right now. Uh, this is our live webcast on a special preview of the Information 2018 conference coming up in Austin, Texas. You can head over to infraredtraining.com slash webinars if you want to join the live broadcast. And I should mention we're also recording today's presentation. So if you've missed any part of this, it'll be available for uh, playback here at a, at a later date. But you had touched on a moment ago, Alex, I think some of the essence of the conference, and it's really for anybody, right? Doing buildings, electrical, roofs, mechanical. Uh, we've got everything from what? The large uh, proceedings, and this is the main paper and the general session, more one-on-one -on -one poster sessions, and then the clinics. I don't know if you want to speak briefly about what these various things offer for the attendees. Yeah, information, it's really it's a really <laughs> unique training experience in the sense that it's it's the culmination of all applications for thermography. You have so many options of workshops that you can attend. We have representatives from the medical thermography field, automation, mechanical, electrical, building inspection. So you, you don't have to feel like you have to limit yourself to what you already know. You can branch out, you can meet people, you can learn new things. And as we saw in the video, we have our large general session hall presentations, but we also have really intimate, small one-on-one -on -one or smaller group presentations so that you have the ability to really ask questions, get involved, and really get something out of the conference, which is, which is really unique. And I mentioned uh, also that there is service uh, as well. FLIR service will be there. If you have your camera and you bring your camera to the conference, I believe we're still offering the free sort of camera 
maintenance check and calibration, not the calibration check, but sort of a general maintenance overhaul. Is that true? That's true. Yes. Uh, so serv our service department is offering a spot calibration and just a general checkup on your camera. So if you want to bring that with you, um, you can sign up before the conference just so you make sure that you do get a spot. I know this is very popular and we have a lot of people who take advantage of this. So if you did want to bring your camera and have them inspect it, we do have a link on our website where you can actually register for a time slot to get that inspected. Okay, great, great. Well, the main part of the presentation here today is covering some of the content that will be presented at information. Uh, I gotta give uh, some just great credit here to Gary Orlov, our global curriculum director, who's put this entire program together. Uh, Gary couldn't make it today, but his work is instrumental in really what is information, putting the entire conference together here. Uh, we put a call for papers out uh, back out in what, January, and we got close to, I think, almost 100 submissions, and now we've narrowed it down to 60 different presentations and training clinics that we then organized here into this four-day event. So there's a lot of information uh, for those that are attending the Digest, but it'll certainly be well worth your time. Uh, as I mentioned, 60 that are planned at the moment, uh, the majority of which are going to be on the condition monitoring side of the house, so anything electrical and mechanical related. And then we have a big uh, segment here of research and science this year for uh, Information 2018. Uh, unmanned aerial systems, uh, UAV and drones, that's going to be a big part of this as well. Buildings, optical gas imaging, life sciences, several others. So we'll have these up on the website here in the coming weeks. Uh, some of the highlights. Let me just pull this out for a second. Nicole Martino, actually, you see Nicole Martino is actually pictured there. She's going to be here the week of June 18th for another information webcast that we'll be offering. And her presentation is going to be what? Using IR for air launch GPR systems to assess the condition of reinforced concrete structures. Yeah, this is um, previous research has indicated that ground penetrating radar and IR have the ability to identify these areas of subsurface deterioration and bare reinforced concrete Bridge decks. This paper is going to talk about the success that they're having with those uh, uh, those two applications there, those two technologies, and how the the results are very promising. It's going to help municip municipalities save quite a bit of money using this NDT tool. We're going to have Nicole on here the week of June 18th to speak more about that particular application. Uh, she'll be joining us here from our studio at our Boston Regional Training Center. And then Clint Underwood from the Northwest Electric Power Cooperative will be presenting on spotting, identifying, and repairing transmission substation hotspots. So Clint's looking forward to seeing this presentation. He says he has several examples of potential problems on their system that were avoided mostly due to thermal imaging. Uh, he's going to explain some of the background, how they knew there was a problem, where they identified the problem, and how they actually repaired the issue. These images will include load tap changers, hotline clamps, fuses, and more. So Clint will be presenting here. That reminds me, speaking of which, it's something we get often asked in classes, especially with outdoor substations. And this is regarding temperature measurements on equipment and, and the difference in temperature. Are they independent of the emissivity setting? Well, here's the thing. It matters what your emissivity is set to in a substation because the temperature difference measurements will be affected by your emissivity value. This is a shot that I took personally. This was actually an on-site class a couple of years ago, and it's an outdoor substation with two disconnects, one showing an apparent temperature difference or a problem, I should say. The other one is the ambient reference. And we see a difference here of about 29 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I took this as an apparent temperature. It's a tough situation to get an accurate temperature measurement in this situation for not knowing emissivity, but also not really having a lock on reflected temperature. So with an emissivity of one, what we're seeing here is an apparent temperature difference between these two phases. Apparent is just sort of, uh, you know, it, it's not a true temperature. It's, we're sort of assuming it's 29 degrees. It's likely a lot more than this. With an emissivity of one, though, it gives me the minimum temperature difference possible. As you decrease your emissivity, that temperature difference gets larger. And the lower you go, the more of a difference you'll see. On the top image there, it's actually with the emissivity set to 1. The bottom image was with the emissivity dialed all the way down to about 0.3. Now, again, I don't know what the emissivity was in this particular situation, but what we're seeing here is that these temperature difference measurements 
are not independent of emissivity and that the fact that as the emissivity goes lower, the difference gets bigger. Without that temperature difference of emissivity, you're just not going to get a good reading. So there we go there. There's, there's an issue there. What else we got? Todd Hillhouse is coming from UAS Thermals. He's going to be in here on, I don't know which day, but Todd's running a clinic at Information. Uh, Todd's been through all levels of, three levels of ITC training. We're glad to have him back. Uh, he's going to be running a clinic. He's going to elaborate on the evolution of past regulations up to the present day, FAA requirements, and the limitations of consumer-based SUAS operations. He'll explain the different classes of airspace and why this matters to an inspector looking to use drones for their business. In addition to getting an FAA Part 107, Todd will be demystifying the process often required to fly at or near congested areas and airports and expand upon the industry best practices for SUAS operations. So we're looking forward to having Todd here at the event as well. And he's also discussing building envelope work. And this reminds me of something I wanted to share with you. Uh, with building envelope, I'm also presenting a clinic here at Information 2018. Uh, the many challenges of being a building thermographer. This is something that uh, I like to really talk about a lot because buildings are one of the more complicated inspections that we can use for uh, thermal imaging. It's uh, very challenging in many ways. And one of the issues that we run into is solar loading. And these are one of the examples I'll be sharing with you at the conference. Uh, according to ASTM C1060, you have to wait at least three hours on a light frame building and up to eight hours on a masonry structure before that surface is inspectable with thermal imaging. It's because the transients created by the sun last for a significant amount of time. And those transients can make your inspection very confusing because of thermal capacitance and differences in heat capacitance of different materials. Different building elements change temperature at different rates. And the issue here is that what you see in the morning isn't necessarily going to be what you're going to be seeing in the afternoon in certain conditions. Let me share a video here of uh, actually a, um, this was uh, my house. They did a presentation here. Uh, you're going to first see what it looks like at, in the morning and then in the afternoon, uh, how the wall system itself changes. My house, it's a 1930s cape. Wood frame construction. This was about 7 o'clock in the morning on a cool spring day. 32 degrees outside, 68 on the inside. And you see cold studs and warm no cavities in this particular situation. Well, this is first thing in the morning. South facing wall. The pattern we see here is indicative of a wall that's actually insulated and working well. Well, as the sun hits this wall and begins to heat the wall surface up, the wall starts to go through a transient that we're going to notice here in a moment. We do see some areas of missing insulation and air leakage related issues, but beyond that, it looks fairly normal, especially these two cavities here in the middle. But this is first thing in the morning. What happens is the sun heats the exterior of the house. Well, the wall starts to go through a transient. And as the day progresses and that heat from the sun starts charging that south facing wall, we see that reversal of the thermal pattern begin as heat transfer is now in the opposite direction of what it was earlier. Even though the temperature didn't get much above 45 degrees on this particular day, the outside wall surface was well above 100 degrees. Now that greater temperature difference there was forcing more heat to come back into the house through the studs and the cavities, so that by 3, 4, even 5 o'clock here in the afternoon, you see a reversal of this thermal pattern. That reversal now, the wall appears to be uninsulated because it's still colder outside and warmer on the inside. In truth, the wall is actually insulated. But this is just one of the issues that building thermographers will run into in, in certain situations that can make it very challenging and very confusing. So this clinic I'll be working on here for the conference is going to talk about exactly this, how building inspections can be very challenging and what thermographers uh, can do about it. You know, what are your options in this case? And so that's something we'll be chatting about there, and that will be a clinic that will be to determine, be determined. I think it's going to be on Thursday. And then another thing is Gary Orlov is going to be presenting his 16-year roof moisture study. Uh, Gary's been traveling down to Florida here for the last 16 years for a conference, and the hotel he stayed at is um, uh, had a roof problem ever since its inception. When they first built it back in 2002, uh, he noticed that there was a roof leak here out on the hotel. And then at the time, he was using a P60 thermal imager. He has followed this for the last uh, decade and a half, and he'll be presenting the results on this survey that have shown this roof leak has been expanding 
getting worse over time. And we'll see some of the results of that as well. So I'm looking forward to that. It's also interesting to see the differences in the camera types. Over oh, the years. absolutely. Yeah, those are some great images. The P60, uh, it's a, you know, not as sensitive as a camera, not as high as a resolution as the 620. And he'll also be touching on some of that as well. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, good. So that's that clinic. And then also on Thursday, Jason Gagnon will be with us uh, presenting on uh, FLIR Tools. FLIR Tools. Risk. Yep. What do um, we got there? We have two clinics scheduled um, on uh, FLIR Tools and FLIR Tools Plus. Um, now, uh, if you're not familiar with the software, um, FLIR Tools is a free software that we offer. It's compatible with most of our modern cameras, uh, supports a radiometric JPEG format. Um, it can import images from your camera, you can analyze the images, you can create reports, um, and you can actually create text annotations. Um, now, these clinics are scheduled for an hour and a half. So um, this, is, this will give us the ability to spend a little more time on the software than we typically can in a level one class, which is sometimes somewhat abbreviated. So I'm hoping that we can um, uh, talk about topics like the text annotation templates, because I think it's a an advantageous tool that a lot of people may not know about. Um, we're not going to assume any prior knowledge with these clinics, so we'll start from the beginning to show you the whole process, um, how to create those reports, and how to create those text comment or text annotation templates. Um, now, the next uh, or the the other clinic uh, will focus on FLIR Tools Plus. Uh, this is the optional upgrade for FLIR Tools. And the main reason why people upgrade is because of the word add-in, what we're calling Report Studio. Um, this includes a wizard and a word add-in, so you can create your own templates. Um, and uh, this really um, opens up a lot of possibilities with your reporting. Um, you can create a brand new template from scratch. Um, you can uh, add cover pages, back pages. You can design the IR page to have a photo and tables. So it's kind of open-ended as far as how you want to design these templates. And you can get very specific. Uh, and the idea is to try to expedite your reporting as much as possible by customizing the template and putting all your information in up front. Um, and uh, the, the majority of the time, uh, will be spent on this topic because we have a lot of questions about it. Um, and uh, this new add-in is very different from what we have been using in the past, which was the old FLIR Tools Plus uh, add-in and reporter add-in. They're basically the same thing. This is new within the last couple of years, um, and um, uh, we hope to spend a fair amount of time on this uh, during the clinic. Um, Tools Plus actually uh, has three features that it adds to Flare Tools. Um, the other feature, or one other feature that you get, is the uh, Panorama tool, which allows you to combine images, uh, several different standard JPEGs, into a larger high-resolution radi uh, high radiometric image that you can analyze in the software. Um, the third feature that you get is uh, sequence recording. Uh, and this, uh, the sequence recording is compatible with um, most of the modern USB and Ethernet cameras. So the advantage of this is you can plug the camera into your PC, you get a live image on the screen, and uh, you can record uh, sequences. Um, and then you can replay them, you can create temporal plots, measure temperatures, um, and export JPEGs from the recording. Uh, and use them in your inspection reports. So um, we hope to touch on all three topics, but we are going to spend the most uh, most of our time uh, in the clinic on the, the whole template concept, the template design process. All right. Great. And you want to do a quick little demonstration here, yeah, too, right? Yeah. I thought this would be a good opportunity to kind of give you um, a, a brief overview of some of what we will cover during these clinics. And just, uh, just a quick reminder, again, if you're on Facebook right now, this is a live tutorial, live webinar on the uh, special preview of Information 2018, featuring myself, Jason Gagnon, and Alex Kushiel. If you have questions, we'll get to some of these here at the end. Yep. But right now, we're doing a quick little FLIR Tools demo. Yep. Um, so this is FLIR Tools. This is your image library. Um, this is where you can import images from the camera into these folders. 
Uh, the library just sort of collects all your images into one location. Uh, it shows you all the thumbnails. Um, if you double click on these images, it will open up a full size image. And because these are uh, radiometric images, they contain all the camera information and all the temperature data. So you can process the images and most of the changes that you make in the camera, you can make in the software. Uh, and that's the advantage of that radiometric format. All the data is there. So uh, things like your uh, thermal tuning, your level and span adjustment uh, can be made very easily just by sliding these brackets back and forth. So it's kind of uh, similar to your brightness and contrast. Okay. All your measurement functions are over here on the left. So I didn't have any measurement tools on this image when it was saved. So um, what if you wanted to take a spot measurement? Well, you can just click the tool, click on the image. There's your spot, uh, spot meter. Um, you have areas, so you can find the maximum or average temperature in any, any region on the image. Um, you have a line tool. Draw that on the image. You have a delta T, which can uh, calculate your temperature rise. Uh, and you can use any combination of these measurement tools. And uh, one nice thing about the software is that it can enhance your camera functions in a lot of ways. So not all cameras can do areas and lines and some of these uh, measurement functions. But the software doesn't really care. You can use any radiometric JPEG, whether it's from an E8 or a T660 or whatever camera, and uh, you have the same tool set available to you. Um, you can also uh, change your object parameters. So anytime we talk about measurement, we have to talk about your parameters. And, the importance of your emissivity and reflected temperature and getting those things right in order to get an accurate temperature measurement. And you have all of those parameters listed over on the right. Uh, so if you didn't get your emissivity quite right in the camera, uh, you can pretty easily change that here to whatever value it should be. And it makes the adjustment to the image. So all your temperatures are now uh, correct, assuming that that's your right emissivity value. Um, Another thing to note here is that uh, some cameras only have emissivity and reflected, but the software shows all of those parameters that are part of that radiometric formula. So if your camera doesn't have distance, uh, you have it here in the software. Um, and you also have the ability to, to compensate for your external optics. So if you're looking through an IR window, uh, you can put the transmission value in there in the software. So the whole radiometric model is all built right into these images. Um, right? Uh, now, once your changes are made, you can save that. And the software has the ability to create an inspection report for you. So we can pull this down. We can pick the template that we want to use. And it will take however many images you have selected and put them into a new report. I only had one selected here, so I got a one page report. But if you pick 10 or 20 images and do the same thing, you get a 10 or 20 page report. Um, and uh, that's what it looks like. So it pretty much takes the, the measurement table and the parameters and just moves it underneath the, the thermal image in this template. So all your data is there. Any text you put on the image will be there. Um, and just to switch back for a, a moment, let me go back to the library. Um, I mentioned the annotations uh, a little bit earlier. Um, over on the right, we have the ability to import text from a template. And this is one of those things that um, we actually did a webinar on a few yeah. months ago. Um, I don't think it's utilized all that much, but it's a very handy tool. You can use these text templates in the camera and in the software, and it gives you the ability to create these pull down menus. So you don't have to type everything in over and over again. If you're looking at the same equipment items on a regular basis, you can plug them into these text templates and mm -hmm. save that data with the JPEG, and then that goes right to your report. And so this is the kind of thing that we'll talk about in the, uh, uh, in, at the conference during yeah. the clinic. All right. Now, with FLIR tools, with the free software, you can create reports, but they're somewhat limited. Uh, you can't change the, the template that it uses as far as the page layout and the content. You can change the logo, you can add some stuff to the header and footer, but you can't change the, the template. Um, so if you find this to be a little bit too limited, 
then you might want to think about Tools Plus because that installs this FLIR add-in for Word. And so this is where you can design your own template. And you can start from a blank page just like this and build it up from there. You can also edit the sample templates. There's about, uh, I don't know, almost a dozen templates that you get with the mm -hmm. software to start out with. So you don't have to start from scratch. You can edit one of those, customize it a bit, save it as your own template. Um, but just to highlight a little bit about the process here that you would use to create these, um, anytime you're making a new template, you have to start from this create new template button on the ribbon. And this sets up the framework for the new template and the sections. Um, so you'll always have this task pane on the left when you're editing a template. And there are three types of sections that we use. The data section is where your thermal image and all your IR data would go. Intro and final are optional. That would be your cover pages, your back pages. If you use a summary table, it would have to go on the intro or the final section. It can't go on the data section. So the intro, final are optional. The data you need, you need to have this in order to process the reports. Uh, so from here, you can start to think about how you want to lay this out. Um, these are all your buttons. So these are the really the only unique objects that we install. Uh, the rest of it is just Word. So the majority of these templates are just Word. Word tables, text, header, footer information. Uh, there's really only a few objects that you would use that are unique to our software to handle the automation, right? So for instance, if I wanted to put a thermal image on the page, click this button here, that's where it'll go. That's about the simplest template you could have. That'll work. Um, but typically you'd want to put the thermal and the visual. That's what the digital image button is for. Um, next thing to think about would be what kind of information you want to show about the image. Um, you have fields, which is just a single cell, and you have tables that can be used to show image data. Measurement, camera information, text annotations, all that stuff can be displayed using these tables and fields. Um, and there's several kind of predefined table formats here. If you wanted to show a measurements table or you know camera information table, um, you can do that. You can just click and uh, it'll just put the table on the page for you. It formats it. Okay. And these tables are always two columns. Um, but you can also customize them. So if you wanted to have a mix of measurements and camera information, we can go to table, go to table at the top here, and we can go to create. And all these groups show different types of information. Uh, so you can go through these groups. You can add the items that you want. So if you want emissivity, just hit the plus. If you want camera information like camera model, you hit the plus. Builds the preview down here. So you can set this up to be very specific to what you would like to report on. Um, so for example, I have a table here that I made. These tables are saved. This is a nice thing. You can, every time you make a custom table, it saves it. So you can reuse it in reports and in other templates. And that's a time saver. And that, we didn't have that ability in the old add-in. So that's kind of a neat feature. Um, and so when you insert it, that's what you get. It links up to the thermal image. And then when you process these reports, it duplicates this data page for every image that you send to the report, and it populates that table with information from whatever image is on that page. Um, so when you make these reports, the result will look something like this. So this is a template that had a cover page, had a page for a summary table. So this is a cool table, too, because it auto populates depending on how many images you put into the report. And uh, you can use it as a summary or as a table of contents. Uh, and you can choose whatever information you want to show. Uh, in this case, they just show like file name, date, and time. But you can show page number, text annotations, temperature data. It's kind of open-ended as far as that goes. And then following that are your image pages. And even though we're in Word, these are still editable. 
So I can double click. If I want to change the palette on this image, I can just double click on it. And brings up this editor. There's no coincidence. It looks like FLIR tools. It's by design. Um, we can change the palette just for instance, but you have all your measurement functions available to you. You can close that and it'll update the report. So it's a Word report that contains the active editable thermal images. Okay. Great. And so we'll spend, I know that was a quick demo, but we plan to spend a fair amount of time on this um, during the clinic at the conference. And so we'll, we'll talk about cover pages, we'll talk about summary tables, we'll use the, the wizard, the Report Studio wizard, which is a really cool new feature um, that just walks you through the process of creating these word reports. So Great, looking forward to that. That's gonna be Thursday yeah. afternoon, I think. 1.30 to five is what we're planning at the moment. Uh, yeah. I think so. Yeah. I'm not sure, but yep. yep. And so, so. You have, if people can bring their laptops, so they have questions also, or is there gonna be a little one-on-one uh, -on -one time available? Well, yeah, or? we're always available. We're, okay. we're there all week. So we can certainly, you know, answer any questions uh, that you might have Great. while you're there. Yep, definitely. So again, there are and a half uh, sessions, both Tools and Tools Plus. Um, so we look forward to seeing you there. Great. Thanks, uh, Jason. So the exhibitors, not only do we have the content, we've got the clinics, the presentations, we also have the exhibitors. Who's coming this year to exhibit? Yeah, we're really excited for our exhibitor hall this year. Every information, it seems to grow a little bit more and more every year. So that's what we love. Um, and our, our, some of the exhibitors that we have this year, uh, the first being UE Systems. I just, I'm just going to just go over a few that we yeah. have. We're expecting a lot more. Uh, these are just a few that we'd want to highlight for the time being. We have UE Systems. Uh, they do ultrasonic testing equipment and training. Uh, we also have MedHot Thermal Imaging. Uh, their, their primary focus is medical thermography, training, and consulting. Uh, Carol Chandler brings a great booth every year. Uh, she has this interactive booth where you can actually go in, utilize one of her systems, and get a picture of yourself in infrared. That's cool. Um, exactly how they use it in medical thermography, which which is great. Um, it's very popular every year. We also have Emitted Energy. Uh, they're automation process specialists. MoviMed, uh, they do advanced thermal imaging solutions for R&D, uh, oil and gas, uh, aerospace, industrial, they, they do just about everything. Uh, then we also have Viper Imaging. Every year we see more and more people who are interested in aerial applications, so it's great to have representatives there. They offer turnkey solution packages for both industrial mechanical PDM apps and also optical gas imaging, which is awesome. Um, and we also have Nexco, and they're primarily doing non-destructive testing on concrete, bridge deck lamination. So we're, we're getting a really great diverse group, um, and everybody brings something special to the table, which is what we love about the exhibitor hall. And we have this in the main uh, dining area. So in the morning while you're having breakfast or lunch, you're welcome to interact with them, go see what they're offering. It's, it's really a great experience. Great. Good, good. We're well, looking forward to that. And if you want to join us at Information, we've got the registration packages that Alex had mentioned here earlier, uh, both the basic and the premium package. If you want a little bit more, however, as promised, what do we have for the VIPs here, Alex? Yeah, this is really exciting. This is the first year that we've done this. We're offering our VIP package. And for $37.95, you can get a FLIR E8 professional thermography camera included with your registration and this this is new this, this is not is, a giveaway it's not a prize you're not in, entering into a drawing you're actually getting this camera with your registration yeah right. and and what i'd like to do uh i just like to recap just a couple of things on the packages matt if we could back up one more slide just just so you all understand kind of what the main differences between these packages are so we have the basic package for 1695 which is solely the conference attendance then we have our premium package, which includes a C3, and you also get some online application courses. That's $19.95. And then we have our VIP package for $37.95. And we've mixed in some, some great, some great uh, items into this package as well, one being the VIP seating. Uh, information is notorious for its networking opportunities, and I'm sure many of you will get distracted talking to people and shaking hands and, and kind of just interacting with one another and 
in all of our sessions, we're offering VIP seating, which is basically going to be front row and center. So you're guaranteed a seat in the workshop that you want to attend, which is which is great. I'm, right. I'm excited to see that. And one of the benefits, too, of attending information is that if you're an existing ITC student, so long as your certification has not exceeded six months past the date of its expiration, you can renew your certification for another five years by attending the conference. And that's that's included in all our packages, as well as including all the papers and proceedings. So as an attendee of the conference, you'll get all the papers and you'll also renew your certification. And the big announcement for this year, too, for students, right? If they're yes. a grad also, these are the promo packages that the, the, the codes, I should say, that they'll use for that, right? Yes. So any ITC graduate, you're eligible for $200 off any package of your choice. You'll see that we have indicated uh, three unique promotion codes on top of each package. Uh, so if you want to write these promos down, I know we're going to be sending out a recording of the webinar afterwards. Yep. So you'll have all this information available to you. Um, so we encourage you, if you're if you're a student and this is interesting to you, uh, join us and take advantage of these great prices. Great. And this is an additional $200 off beyond right. what you're getting normally with this as well. So this is great. What yeah. A great offer. Yep. $200 right off the top of the advertised prices on the website right now. All right. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up here uh, for today. We will take some questions on FLIR tools and some of the other content. But before we do go, I want to remind everybody that we have the free 2016 papers that are available, these three PDFs that you'll find on the right-hand side of your screen. If you're joining us on the GoToWebinar platform, we'll get the presentation from Frederick Brooks, the one from Randy Keyes, and then Maude Hovens and Andy Wichter. We've got these three PDFs that are available. We normally charge for these, but we're giving these away as a thank you for joining us here during today's broadcast. We also have an information brochure that's available on the handout section there on the right-hand side. As Alex mentioned, we're recording the session, so we'll have it available for playback here at a later date. If you'd like to watch this, head to infraredtraining.com slash webinars. We'll probably post this up in the next week or so. We'll have this uh, up online, and we'll give an email out to everybody, get an email out to everyone notifying of, uh, them when it's ready. If you want to join us on social media, we'll be doing quite a bit of promotional uh, announcements on, on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, or Instagram using the hashtag information18. As we get closer to the conference, we'll offer more in terms of what's going to be planned for certain presentations, uh, special announcements for the conference that are coming up. And of course, while we're there, we'll have wall-to-wall -wall coverage on the various uh, presentations, the networking sessions, and all the other activities that are going on uh, via social media. Again, it's hashtag information18. Of course, you can follow us on any of these uh, uh, outlets as well. Then if you want to email myself or Jason or Alex, any questions, any conference re registration questions should go to Alex. Send any training or certification questions to me, and FLIR Tools uh, should go to Jason there. I'll leave those emails up. Uh, while we have any questions, do we have any questions that came in specific to the conference at all? Oh, uh, we pretty... had one question about marine surveying, if we're doing anything on that. I don't think we are. Nothing planned at this moment, okay. not to say that we wouldn't add something here later, but as of right now, the main program uh, is pretty much set. And I don't know of any marine-related papers this year. We do have some from past conferences with bolt hull inspections. Uh -huh. If you want to email me directly, I can try to track that paper down. I'd be more than happy to give that to you as well if we do have uh, one of those. I'm pretty sure we got at least one from um, a past conference. The only question I see here, other question, is about electrical equipment and line. I assume line inspections. Um, it sounded like we had one that was, that addressed that topic. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, have them send me an email directly, okay. and I'll see if we can dig yeah. around and find that paper also. Yeah. Okay. We can certainly okay. do that. Um. All right. I think we'll take any other questions offline, uh, but let's just wrap it up. Remember, this September, the 11th to the 14th, we're going to be in Austin, Texas for Information 2018. Hopefully, you can join us. As Alex mentioned, we got the registration packages that are available. Now's a great time to sign up. You want to book those hotel rooms soon? Absolutely. Uh, those are filling up as well. We're at the Hilton Austin, right at the end of 6th Street there. We'll start on the September 11th. We'll go to the 14th. We've got 60 clinics and presentations, a lot of great networking opportunities. You're going to meet hundreds of your peers that are active in the industry. It's a one-of-a-kind event. You don't want to miss it. Information this September 
uh, in Austin. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen, for being on with me today. Appreciate thank you, Matt. it. Thank you. And uh, folks, we'll see you on in line again here very soon. In fact, we'll be back next Friday, the 27th of April. Bill Schwann will join us for a UAS uh, and a roof inspection webinar at 11 o'clock Eastern. And we've got more live dates uh, coming up. I think we've got the uh, iPad and Apple mm -hmm. uh the uh, iOS uh, Flare Tools app, uh, mid May. Mid May. Yeah. Mid May eighteenth. Yeah. So we'll doing a we'll be doing a presentation on on the Flare Tools mobile. Yep. And we'll have all that online on our website, infraredtraining.com slash webinars. All right, for Jason Gagnon, Alex Crucial, I'm Matt Schwegler with ITC. Thanks for joining us for today's special live preview of the information conference. We'll see you online again soon at a future live web event. Have a great weekend.